Hello again, human beings from the planet Earth. We are on the home page of my website in the top banner spot, what you see in front of you, Reality Check, a manual for creating the Earth that should be, is a book that is now available on Amazon uh, via an author named Pivot. Why is it here, and why am I talking to you about it? I was approached by the author last night via email, who had connected with me on Twitter and believe that his book stands for the same thing that I stand for, uh, striving to wake the underinformed and be a voice for the voiceless. And um, according to his email, this book embodies it. So I read just a few paragraphs, and I was convinced that I would do this review for this person. I, I was honored that somebody would ask, first of all. It's a humbling experience when somebody wants your opinion of their work especially when the person who's asking knows that you have a big social network and if your work isn't like then it can really hurt you um, you know not that I go out of my way to hurt people but I'm just saying uh, so I was humbled by this and I was honored and I want to bring you um, a first glance of the book and then I'll be back in, in a few days two three days uh, when I finish reading it to give you a full review but I thought I would uh, read some of the excerpts to you and then we'll go quickly and tell you a little bit about the author. A current example of contention revolves around a Supreme Court ruling in 1976, Buckley v. Valio, in which the court struck down the limits on citizen expenditures towards politicians. They ruled that it would be an infringement on the First Amendment to set such restrictions, but by the very nature of what it means to achieve balance, it should be clear that a ruling that allows for unrestricted expression must inherently be lopsided and therefore not balanced, nor just, because again, by definition, balance requires restriction or limitation. Yet Sean Parnell of the Center of Competitive Politics would have us believe that money enables free speech, and if you're going to limit the ability of money to be spent to promote political speech, then you are necessarily necessarily limiting political speech. Actually, Sean, since it's called free speech, one doesn't need any money for one speech to be enabled. Hence, if we were going to limit the amount of money that can be spent on political speech, it does not necessarily limit political speech. It merely limits the medium by which everyone can express it. Because if you really think about it, the right to not have our speech abridged refers to the content of our speech not the medium by which we express it and if you think about it a little more since Bill Gates at all have no political spending limits on their speech the amount of speech that I have is necessarily limited by comparison moreover thanks to a highly duplicitous Supreme Court ruling the right of so-called corporate personhoods to invoke constitutional protections has led to corporations overriding the protections that individuals are supposed to have. For example, although pleading guilty to cause deaths due to fraudulent marketing, Pfizer Pharmaceuticals merely had to pay a steep fine. But nobody in that decision-making process actually had to go to jail. By the way, normal citizens do when held accountable for murder, ironically. Mr. Pivot, said young Johnny Appleseed. I think I understand what you're saying. When people are ignorant and confused, they make themselves scared, and vice versa, and so on. So now we kids have to pay, and still don't, uh, for all your fucked up shit. But there's one thing that I still don't get. I have an uncle who has a boyfriend instead of a girlfriend. The government says that they can't get married and have the same rights as a couple of the opposite sex. Plus, sometimes they get beat up because they can't make babies. So then shouldn't we be beating up old heterosexual couples too? You said that something was wrong if it suppressed someone else's potential or was destructive. But my uncle and his boyfriend aren't suppressing anyone's potential. Well, Johnny, everyone gets scared when they see someone living a different lifestyle because it could mean that. And that's where we're going to stop for now, folks. We're going to leave you hanging. Um, when I read these few short paragraphs, I said, um, I've got to make this available. This is, this is, without reading any deeper, this is outstanding. 
and I look forward to it. Um, and yes, for any of you that were wondering, Kevin does read and quite well, actually. All right, uh, enough about me, a little bit about the author. Pivoted as an animal lover with a BS in political science, he aspires to one day become a superhero, the Panzer, a vigilante who goes after schmucks wearing their pants halfway down their butts. He pulls their pants down, pushes them over, and then he runs away, of course. What an outstanding bio for an author. I love him already, and just so that you know, he is also the creator of StopLittering.com, so you can go check that out as well. Okay, folks, there's a little bit of uh, an introduction to the book. You can come on over to the website. Link will be below. Uh, $12.95 through Amazon, um, and I was going to order it, but because I'm doing the review, I'm going to get a uh, hand-signed edition sent to me, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but i got to start tonight reading off the Word documents that I've been sent. Much love, many thanks, and I'll see you in a few days with a full review of the book.